G'day everyone, David Bayless here from BM Pro here at headquarters and I'm again here with Ryan Hammond from SPB. Now Ryan, we're going to talk now about paralleling series um, of batteries. Yep. Now we know that with lead acid batteries, you know, if we're going to parallel up batteries, that we've got to keep cable lengths similar size yep. so that we don't have a different amount of resistance because we know copper in the wire creates resistance. Yep. So we want to have all of our cables and everything, all of our terminals and everything else like that, all the same, all the same length. Um, obviously we need to put fusing in, so always good battery practice, whether it's lead acid or whether it's lithium, it doesn't matter, sticking a fuse um, on the positive side. And then of course we've got the, uh, when we're, we're putting them in parallel, positive and negative, we'll take our positive and our negative from opposite ends of the bank. So Correct. we don't, either lead acid or lithium, we don't use the positive and negative on, on one battery, the closest battery, positive on one end and negative coming out on the other side. Correct. Now there has been some conjecture as to whether you can actually, you know, series up or parallel up lithium batteries. Um, now with the Invicta batteries, we know we certainly can. We've tested them, you've tested them and everything else like that. So um, can you explain to me what's, what's the issue that's going on there? Because some of them are saying, no, you can't do it. Or is it just that people haven't been well educated in what's best practice in which to be able to install a parallel bank of lithium batteries? Yeah, so uh, you're right, everything that you spoke about with AGM in yep. terms of paralleling batteries is uh, the same with lithium. Uh, it's all best practice and should all be uh, taken into account. Yep. We also recommend fully charging each of the batteries individually yep. before putting them into a, into a parallel network. Yep. Okay, and then with the, the Victor range, it's a maximum of uh, four in parallel. Yep. So just going back a step there, so when we are setting up a parallel uh, bank, lithium or lead acid, is we should always be making sure that we've got batteries which are of the same brand, Correct. of the same size, and of the same age. Correct. So, so, that, so you, don't, you don't put a 60 amp hour, three year old battery with a brand new 100 amp hour battery. To, you don't parallel those back up together. You get two brand new batteries at the same time to put them into parallel, don't yeah, you? Yeah, correct. Yep. Same and, with lithium as well. And, and why is that? Uh, just because of the, the differences in uh, internal resistance. Yeah, so because, because of the age. Of the age, yep. yep. And, uh, and also the differences in capacity. So if you've got differences in capacity, one will get used a lot more than the other one, yep. and that will be the one that dies a lot yep. quicker than the other. So now, as you said before, if we're putting, let's say with a simple circuit, we're gonna put two lithium batteries, 100 amp hour lithium batteries in parallel together. So we should be charging both of those as you recommend and Correct. then get the open circuit voltage to be, I think about 0 0.2, 0 0.2 of a volt. Correct. Only 0.2 of a volt difference between them. So charge them up, let them settle for half an hour, then measure the open circuit voltage across the two terminals yep. on both the batteries, and they should be both within 0.2 of a volt of each other. Yep, and then you can, um, no problems about putting them in parallel. Yep, all right, so now obviously you've got to make sure that you've sized up the right size charger as well. Correct. Because if you, same with lead acid batteries, if you are building a larger bank in parallel there, you are going to need a charger which has got the capacity to bring that battery bank up and not take two weeks to go and charge it because you've gone and added another three batteries. Yeah, that's it. And uh, one of the benefits of lithium ion phosphate is that they take charge more efficiently right. so they can be charged a lot quicker. Yeah. So therefore you can, if, uh, if you do have it, uh, use a larger charger to charge a, a larger lithium parallel bank. Sure. Now, is there any uh, additional maintenance that you would recommend to be done on a parallel bank, say every three months or six months? Uh, yeah, we'd uh, recommend a full charge yep. of the bank. Of the entire bank uh, Of the entire whole. bank, yep, yep. To, to bring them all up. Yep. And uh, normally they'll balance at the top. Right, yep. Okay, so we'd recommend a full, uh, a full charge of the balance. Yeah, because if you're letting it go months. down to that 50, 60%, you'll have some that are at 45, 50, 55. Yeah, they'll so inherently bring, get out of balance slightly. Correct, so bring them all back up and then using the BMS, the BMSs will, you know, across the batteries, will pull the amount of charge that's required through yeah, to get them all up. They'll, they'll balance themselves out. Yeah. Um, in a, right. in a parallel system. Very good. All right, so there you go. So yes, you can parallel up lithium batteries. There is best practices to take, um, uh, to take heed of, such as the cabling and the fusing and things like that, ages of the batteries. So pay attention to those best practices, but most of them are very similar to what's happening in a lead acid battery. All right, we'll see you in the next episode.